National security risk dominating policy efforts in Washington. It was TikTok yesterday, US Steel this morning, Chinese EVs about a week or so ago. Where is this effort ultimately going into November? Well, it's a great question, Jonathan, because we're seeing various threads all come together. We heard the uh, U.S. Steel CEO talking about the importance of supply lines and supply chains separately when it comes to EVs and TikTok, which we uh, saw the big vote in the House yesterday. There's a question concerning data. All these roads point back to China, though, because, you know, the underlying tensions between the world's largest and second largest economies remain. And the U.S. is concerned about making sure that Americans' data and privacy and national security are protected uh, and supply chains are, too. Michael, if everything's a national security risk, are we diminishing the meaning of national security? Well, you know, at a time that we're also seeing Russia making gains on the battlefield in Ukraine and this battle to win the hearts and minds of the global south, uh, it, it, everything acquires an additional level of importance. And, uh, and people are much more fundamentally aware of how all these things fit together, especially after the pandemic, when we saw supply chains pinched and the effects felt here at home. So it may not look like a national security question in the traditional military defense sphere, yet there is an economic security question that's just as important and that hits home here pretty directly when things go sour. Japan was also worried when the U.S. paused the LNG export approvals. Now Japan is concerned because of what's going on with U.S. steel. Is this administration putting election politics over its firm allies? Well, that's, and I'm glad you asked that, Anne-Marie, because as you know, in a few weeks, the Japanese prime minister will be visiting Washington for a state visit. And this will be an awkward moment for him with the president, because the obviously Nippon Steel, uh, an important manufacturer back home for, for Japan, but they are buying an iconic American firm. Biden used that uh, word in his statement. And I'm glad you were able to show that for, for viewers. There was so much to unpack in what Biden was saying because he is addressing U.S. steel status. Even in a non-election year, this would be a tough deal to get through. If Trump were in office, he said, he has said he would, he would block it immediately. And I think it would be tough for Biden to do even in an off year because remember, he was born in Pennsylvania. He has ties to this area. U.S. Steel is from Pittsburgh. So for, for Biden, there is that. Add the election year and it becomes even harder, especially as Trump and Biden are vying for the union vote and trying to win in these swing states, especially Pennsylvania, but also Michigan and Wisconsin. The so here's them make up the so I'm he, sorry, go ahead. he was in Wisconsin yesterday. He's going to Michigan today. He's from Pennsylvania. Can he win without the blue wall? You know, the Democrats maintain that they have several paths to victory. It will be difficult. It will require him to win the other four swing states, including Arizona, Georgia, and North Carolina. So th this would be a, a much tougher road to hoe for him if he doesn't prevail in these three places. Remember, in 2016, Trump swept them. And then in 2020, Biden turned around and swept those three.